I've been noticing it coming up a lot when the brakes on these trucks won't bleed and no one can seem to figure out why. Normally when the rear brakes don't bleed. So I figured I'd give you the solution to why your brake fluid isn't flowing. So first some basic old car brake fluid theory here. So here's your mass cylinder. It's a dual chamber master cylinder. You notice two lines coming out of it. And if you pop the little finger off here and take a look underneath you'll notice there's two chambers with a dividing wall. Why is that one low, you ask? Because this truck's decked, like all of them. But anyway, here's the rationale. Uh, at some point in the mid-60s, they started using these. Prior to that, they had single chamber master cylinders, which just had one giant fluid reservoir that fed all the brakes. Normally off of one line, they just teed off all over the vehicle. Like it teed front to back and it teed left to right. Problem with those were if you lost brake fluid in any wheel, like blew a line off, something like that, wheel cylinder, you lose all your brakes. So the reason there's two chambers on these is that say you lose a rear line or a front line, you still have half your brakes. And that's why the front and the rear brakes are isolated through the entire vehicle. Also something to note, uh, this one has two different sizes. Larger ones your front brakes, smaller ones your rear brakes. This applies to disc and drum applications, not disc disc, not drum drum, where a vehicle that has four-wheel disc or four-wheel drum. Well, usually those times uh, the uh, mass cylinder is the same size on both sides. And also something to note, uh, you're not necessarily have the front in the front and the back in the back. On uh, so some of the drum brake cars, uh, this is the front and this is the back. So you can have to look at the lines where they follow or Google it on your car. So where the lines go? Well, they come to the mass cylinder and they go to this thing down here, which on these Chevy trucks is under the radiator. It's really nice to get to without fan shot in. This is your proportioning valve. Those lines in the top are your two lines that come in from the mass cylinder. One right there heading out to the right is your rear line. And it's kind of hard to see, but there's two lines that come out roughly there at 11 o'clock and one at 6 o'clock. Those are your two front brakes. So at the proportioning valve, it tees off to both your front brakes and applies one line back to your rear brakes. This thing in the middle here is your brake warning switch. This is what will kick your brake light on the dashboard in case uh, you know something goes awry in your brake system. And from there, your brakes either go left and right, front to back, and go to your calipers, wheel cylinders, depending on what you have in the vehicle. And that's how your brakes work. It is in this proportioning valve, which I have one off the vehicle, this is off a of Chevette, but all these GM ones are the same principle. This is where it all goes to hell when you magically cannot bleed the brakes in your vehicle. You usually after you have a line blowout or something like that, or you know, some kind of loss of brake fluid, be a caliper, wheel cylinder, brake line, brake hose, whatever. The reason is, is because on top of just distributing the fluid, you know, like say this is the front, tees off here, this is the right, or the rear, tees off. Uh, there's also a switch in the middle here, which sits directly under that little sensor. And what it does is it's spring-loaded. And if you have a loss of fluid on one side of your proportioning valve or the other, what this thing will do is it'll actually block off. So there's a little piston in here. Say you lose fluid on this side. Because you have high pressure on this side, it's going to push the cylinder over this way, blocking this line. That's so you don't lose any more fluid already. It pretty much kills that entire part of the brake system. When that happens, there's a, little, there's a little piston up in here in this switch, just like a little nib. This drops because that piston moved over. That piston holds the little nib up. And when that drops, this will ground out and will throw your brake light warning on on the dash. So pretty much if you have a brake light warning on and your e-brake isn't on, you automatically know this little sensor's tripped. So the question is, how do you get it back? So the method that I've always been told online, if you go on all the forums, is you open up your front bleeders or your rear bleeders, whatever side still works, open both the bleeders up and stomp on the pedal. I've never gotten this successfully to work yet. Um, my method is a little bit different. There's two ways you can go about it. One, this thing comes off on most of them that I've dealt with already. And what you can do is if you have the rear line below, you can actually take like a, a needle and push it in from that side and if you push this thing over one click it centers. Other options I had to do on the GMC out there was this switch on threads and then you'll be able to see the piston and if you're lucky you'll be able to see the little groove that that little piston rides in or the little nib on the sensor rather rides in the piston there's like a V cut out of it 
And what you can do is you can take a pick that way, go in there and try and move it back. I kind of got lucky on that one because it wasn't pushed all the way over. I'm pretty sure if you push it all the way over, you can't get that little like groove anymore. And there's one more solution, which I'll show you back on the truck master cylinder, or on the portioning valve. The other solution that she built into these uh, Chevy truck ones, some of the car ones too, right here, it's kind of worn off, is a button. And they had some foresight in this from the factory, and that's if you blow a front brake line, you can just reach down there, push that button, and it pushes that, that uh, piston right back and recenters it again. Unfortunately, they didn't put that in for the rear, and from at least, I don't know, what I've dealt with on these trucks, it's always the rear lines that blow out. So if on your Chevy you ever have a situation where you cannot get fluid out of the front or back or like low fluid where say you bleed the front brakes and they hose pressure out and the rear brakes just trickle, this is the reason. It's not some magic. You can't, you shouldn't just eliminate this because you're going to get a shitty pedal. Uh, the out, you're going to have freaking locking up the rear brakes, all kind of terrible things, which some guys I see on the Chevy truck group say you can do just fine. No, don't do that. Uh, the other thing is kind of cool. I just recently found this out. A uh, certain company online, I don't know the name. You can probably Google it. They make a piece where if you're going to be bleeding brakes from scratch, because sometimes this will just trip bleeding the brakes normally, you thread this sensor out, and there's actually a solid aluminum one that threads in here and will go in that groove in the piston and hold it centered. So then no matter what, when you're bleeding the brakes, that won't trip and screw you over. There you go. Hopefully that was some help to you. I know some of the guys won't even listen to this, but that's the truth in the matter.